Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, Friday, right around the corner tomorrow. Goodness, almost to the weekend here already. September 19th, 2024 is the date, 11.54 a.m. California time here. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.8 across the area of Northern California. A little small microquake coming in here just outside of Eureka, underneath Fortuna, about nine miles or so. Uh, associated with the uh, Cascadia subduction zone out here. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Southern California lighting up here in the last hour, although the majority of these quakes uh, in the microquake range. See, seeing a couple earthquakes here outside of San Diego with a 1.2. And the typical movement here along the San Jacinto fault zone. A couple smaller quakes here across the San Bernardino mountain range, but uh, nothing of any major concern for the moment right now. We're just getting... Uh, a handful of smaller quakes in various areas uh, still appears that we're in a little wave of quietness really no major swarm no major increasing activity a lot of this movement here from yesterday around the Salton Sea area so I guess we'll see how today goes we've seen it here in the past where things are quiet for a few days and then they ramp back up in a wave of uh, earthquakes in various areas in Southern California so uh, today, yesterday, quiet days. We'll see what happens for the remainder of the day. Uh, it's minimal movement across Utah. Not a whole lot going on up in Yellowstone for now. Uh, rest of the country out here. Oil fields getting hit. Kansas, uh, 3.4 earthquake late last night. Uh, not for sure exactly what's out there outside of Anthony, Kansas. Let's see what we have. A whole lot of farm fields out there right although yeah this is a uh, uh, looks like somebody's property out there maybe on the satellite view here don't see any oil pumping operations or fracking pads out there a little bit of movement through the oil fields there across the Permian Basin there of Texas uh, Missouri old Monroe Missouri 2.6 coming into this area early this morning kind of an odd area but then again, it does sit within this area of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, but just on the extensional edge of it. As you can see here, the main area of concern for seismic hazards is going to be right there across uh, various states. And that area is capable of producing a um, uh, upper seven magnitude earthquakes. The last one was a series of them back in 1811 and 1812, the New Madrid Seismic Zone. All right, far as worldwide activity goes, largest magnitude so far today appears to be a 5.6. Papua New Guinea area, 115 miles deep here. Fairly deep earthquake into this, into this subduction zone region, well underneath the Bismarck Sea area. There's a trench uh, right here. <clears throat> Looks like maybe another one over here as well. Nothing major going on here today so far. Again, just 5.6. New Zealand area, see what we have. A down here, four-pointer coming in underneath South Island. I'm going to double-check that, make sure we got uh, the activity. We're going to go over to the GeoNet servers here real quick, see what's going on here across New Zealand. There's that four-pointer uh, about three hours ago or so, 74 miles or 74 kilometers deep, excuse me. Felt, uh, well, 30 reports coming in. Let's see what we got here on the map. I'm guessing probably uh, mainly around the South Island area. Not a whole lot of reports coming in there, it looks like. What's going on here? Yeah, just a couple of those. Way down south and uh, maybe even up in Wellington. I uh, you never know. That's a little distance, so. Uh, earthquake activities. Check out the drums here. See what we have. There's that four-pointer showing up three hours ago. Going to show up here on mainly on the South Island side of things here as we head down on this page. It gets uh, closer to the South Island seismograph stations. And as you can see, they showed up pretty nicely for that four-pointer. But aside from that, generally, uh, even North Island, pretty quiet today. Not a whole lot going on. 5.7 there from yesterday into the um, Kermadec Trench area. So a couple newer earthquakes out here generally focused around Papua New Guinea area through the crunch zone here. I call it the crunch zone because this is where all the, the plates tend to meet and subduct and collide. And uh, that's the Indonesia Islands area. 
some movement out here as well. Look at that earthquake. 5.1 out in the middle of the uh, uh, the Indian Ocean, away from the plate boundary in the mid-Indian Basin area. 5.1, 3 o'clock this morning. Let's see what we got for historical data out here. Just When you look at these maps long enough, you'll know that uh, not quite uh, all that common to see earthquakes way out there. Uh, although there's been a handful here as shown on the earthquake map from 1900 to 2015 within this area. Um, maybe some 4.5s, but further out and about, looks like maybe some larger scale activity. But it's one of those quakes here where we don't really see <clears throat> a whole lot of them out there in this region. A uh, low 4.9 following this earthquake. The 5.5 up here on around the Andaman Sea. Uh, last night as well. So a little bit of adjustment going on here across this area. Movement up into China area. Or Russia. That may be up around Russia. 4.4. And uh, a little bit of movement across the Mediterranean area today. Mostly twos. A couple threes in there. But a lot of that is from yesterday. Iceland stirring up here. Uh, around the Reckoness Peninsula, 3.4, 3.2. So let's go over and see what's going on across Iceland. I haven't checked it in a little while. Been so busy with uh, California earthquakes and uh, Kilauea Volcano, which we'll check here in just a minute. Uh, there's that swarm of earthquakes occurring down here across the rift boundary. Looks like a little bit more than a couple of threes, I'd say. A whole bunch of twos in there as well. Um... A little swarm going on up here as well across and and a distance away from the Savart Singi area which sits down here uh, and that's still at a yellow let's go check out uh, latest information here from the Icelandic Met Office again it's been a little while since I've checked anything uh, magma accumulation continues under Savart Singi at a steady pace very little seismic activity since the last eruption. Uh, looks like it's been about two weeks there since the end of this last eruption in the craters area. Now we're starting to get magma accumulation building back underneath this area at a similar rate. It's a rinse and repeat cycle. Creating some new land out there. There's a the current uplift here. We got a little while. We got a, l a little ways to go before we start seeing another eruption out there. Um, going to be interesting to watch for sure. There's our last run here. Uh, a significant run up in the green line up to the eruption. That was our longest one and our most accumulated magma volume of all these different past eruptions here over the, over the past uh, uh, year. So red line right here. That's where we're at now. We got a little ways to go. We've seen a couple short run ups in terms of magma accumulation there. Uh, with an eruption but uh this one's kind of following these longer trend ones so we'll see what happens either way uh building new land up there right iceland uh is uh <laughs> definitely creating some new land all right see what else we have the atlantic ocean aside from that way up north pretty quiet down south here south america middle america trench Handful of deeper quakes here into the Middle America Trench. Um, Peru Chile Trench here looks about the same as yesterday. Nothing major. One thing I am noticing here is a 4.4 Gulf of California area. Uh, this movement comes after a 3.8 from yesterday. So things are stirring up out here. Uh, hasn't uh, made it to the Southern California area yet in terms of increasing magnitudes. But we could see that. Uh, ramp up here today so we'll have to keep an eye on that um, just it's been one of those things here where we get uh, a couple days of elevated activity a four pointer here a three pointer there maybe a five pointer at various locations around the plate boundary and uh, we'll, we'll go quiet for a couple days and today's about the uh, oh second or third day of of quietness you know, granted, there is about 47 earthquakes here on the map in the last 24 hours. All of these are microquakes and below the 2.5 threshold. But there's no uh, intense swarm, just general plate movement out here. It's on the micro microquake plate, plate 
microquake side of things. There we go. <laughs> Try not to get all tongue-tied there. Goodness. It's not Monday. It's Thursday. All right. Kilauea Volcano. Well, a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Let's see what we got for the latest uh, informational statement here from the USGS, where the volcano is still at a orange and watch. Latest update here was put out yesterday afternoon, it looks like. Uh, still seeing an eruption out there. We can check out some of the multimedia image images here from yesterday. It's just a very small fissure uh, that opened up here across the Middle East Rift Zone. And there's there really hasn't been a whole volume of magma that has been released out here uh, in terms of depletion of the accumulation from underneath, right? Not a whole lot. Uh, but we are getting a couple of different fractures out here spewing out a little bit of lava. But I don't think it's... Um, relieving any of the strain out there maybe at a short term time frame but uh, let's see what we got here let's check out the deformation data still going down there's our magma displacement um back on the 14th of this month here fairly heightened in terms of accumulation that we lost that volume of magma from the summit off to the Middle East Rift Zone. Very noticeable here on the monthly trends. And uh, just kind of watching it. Not for sure exactly if we're going to see these little periodic eruptions, but it's, sit it's sitting down. Let me show you where the Fisher event has taken place. Right about here. Here's our newest Fisher event. There's our most recent little lava flow. If we zoom in here, we can see that it sits right around uh, two major areas, one major zone from 1972, 1974, and then 1997 to 2007 here. Uh, that's where that little opening has uh, popped up here. Um, but I don't, like I say, there's been a lot of accumulation of magma here, and this little bitty flow um, is not going to do much to relieve the strain that's underneath there in terms of the volume of magma. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that for sure. Things can change in a blink of an eye. Uh, Alaska 4.2. Nothing else showing up here across the uh, Canada area for now. Japan Trench. Um, a couple smaller quakes there from yesterday and today. So somewhat active today. Uh, really not a whole lot of bigger quake activity, but... Uh, guess we'll kind of see how things play out space weather activity a little bit of um, aurora activity last night we've seen things kick up out of the blue with the kp index of uh, up around the four range or so really not uh, expecting too much in terms of the aurora uptick here for now really nothing forecasted here as far as any major sunspots go 2825, the culprit of the X-Flare recently is uh, looking a little bit on the choppy side here. Not a whole lot of complexity with the Sunspot Core anymore. Uh, same for these other regions back over here along the eastern limb of the sun. Just uh, a little quietness. As far as the far side here goes, let's check this out real quick and see. This is uh, about a day old, but it will give us uh, a good indicator of what's going on here. We got two eyeballs looking at us maybe. Uh, on the far side. These are uh, sunspots in the darker areas. Not super um, large, and it's really hard to tell if they're complex or not just from looking at this image. This is the far side. Earth-facing side is right here. Um, this is going to be the eastern limb. This is going to be the western limb here, just the way that it's laid out here. Earth-facing side, far side of the sun. So these are coming around the eastern limb here. Should be visible in the coming days. Uh, there's one active region here, a little bitty one that we should see probably today or maybe uh, later tonight. But we'll keep an eye on these two areas. Not anything significant, at least uh, from what I can see, at least on that map. But you never know. Once we get in the view, once we get a view of them, then we'll know a little bit more. There's that little first active region coming around uh, that I mentioned. A little small sunspot out there. Uh, but overall threat right now, 10% chance for X-Flare, M-Flare at 45, C-Flare around 99% chance. 
Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Got a fairly large region out there of severe weather with a 5% chance for tornado activity. St. Paul, Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota, Duluth, heads up. That 2% also surrounds that 5% zone. So the 5% is basically where the majority of the ingredients needed to create these uh, uh, rotating updrafts to produce tornadoes uh, is gonna, gonna occur. So anywhere out here though, in the green or the uh, 5%, just keep your eye on the sky for some uh, tornado activity, wind and some hail threats out there as well. Looks like some damaging hail in the dashed area. And that includes the mentioned areas that uh, were just discussed. Uh, far as hurricane activity goes, let's see what the latest model run shows us for Florida next week. Keep your eye on the bottom of the screen. Still looking at some type of tropical development here. Entering into the Gulf of Mexico. Little bit of uncertainty onto the uh, direction where this um, tropical system will occur or head. Uh, last night, we've seen it hitting a little bit more to the west around Louisiana. Now, a little bit more direction towards uh, Florida. So, going to be one of those things. It looks like maybe another one even behind that. So, getting pretty active. Let's see if they're picking up on this yet. A couple different uh, disturbances here. Next seven days, 30%. Again, we'll see what forms out here. Um, go back here to the regions. I'm gonna get a broader view here and see where this is forming at. States out here, keep an eye on the Caribbean area. I think that's where the uh, storm system's gonna originate. Looks like it's forming there just off the coast of Mexico. Notice that stirring up right here in the Gulf of Mexico. And then from there heads off to Florida as a uh, potentially a strong hurricane again this is a ways out though this is uh next friday well not this friday not tomorrow but next friday so about eight days out we'll get a little bit better view of what's going on here in the coming days but again that's a ways out there so we can't really take these weather models with 100 percent certainty but it does appear the tropics out there are starting to heat up a little bit so we'll have to watch that uh, far as any close approach asteroids here, let's see if our map is working today. Last night or yesterday, it really uh, wasn't working. Today it is, though. Good. 120-foot um, airplane size asteroid here. That's fairly safe distance. Not seeing anything of any uh, major close approaches here for now. Fairly safe in terms of the uh, ones that they're tracking. Seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. Real quick glance here at the uh, California map again. Uh, we got one earthquake here outside of the Bay, or in the Bay region, 1.5. That is in between the uh, Hayward Fault here and the San Andreas Fault. A couple smaller earthquakes there in the last 24 hours. Nothing noticeable in terms of any major uptick out here, though, folks, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, because I'm sure we're going to get back into the active phase here soon. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, folks. Take care.